Yeah, okay. Uh, welcome to the second series of uh, uh, economics questions, past economics questions for 2022 National Examination Council. Uh, the first series was supposed to uh, be from 1 to 30, but uh, it was abruptly interrupted due to uh, one hitches or the other. So uh, the second series is going to continue from 28 to 60. Yeah, so do well to uh, go through the first series of 2022 economics uh, before uh, you continue with this. So uh, you can you can also find it you know uh, in my YouTube channel. So uh, to continue, number 28, we're going to continue from number 28. Uh, crude oil in commercial quantity at Oloibri was discovered by the Dash Oil Company, A, Ajib, B, ExxonMobil, C, Gulf, D, Shell, BP, E, Texaco. Uh, so uh, the, the solution to this question is D, Shell, BP. Shell BP discovered oil in a library in 1956. A library, I think, is in present day Bielsa State. So it was Shell BP, uh, B, uh, British Petroleum, that discovered oil, the first discovered oil in Nigeria in 1956. So, number 29, which of the following is a positive contribution of petroleum to the Nigerian economy? A, high rate of inflation. B, increased income per capita. C, oil spillage. D, political unrest in oil producing areas. E, urban congestion. Uh, so from the options, you know that uh, the positive contribution you know, uh, uh, by the petroleum industry to Nigeria is what? Increase in income per capita. So we'll go to number 30. Uh, the difference in the amount a consumer budgeted to pay for a commodity and the actual amount paid is A, budget surplus, B, consumer surplus, C, diminishing marginal utility, D, price difference, E, utility maximization. The solution is what? Consumer's surplus. That's the difference uh, in the amount a consumer budgeted to pay for a commodity and the actual amount paid. So number 31, which of the following service industry is responsible for transmission of messages? A, advertisement, B, communication, C, insurance, D, tourism, E, transportation. The solution is B, communication is the uh, service industry that is responsible for transmission of messages. Uh, you all know National uh, Communication Commission is the regulatory body that regulates the uh, you know, uh, most of the telecommunication and other communication uh, uh, firms in Nigeria. So number 32, uh, which of the following is not a role of industrialization in economic development of Nigeria? A, creation of employment. B, decrease in productivity. C, diversification of the economy. D, increase in foreign exchange. E, reduction in import. Uh, the solution is what decrease in productivity. That is not what uh, industrialization helps in achieving in Nigeria. Number 33, provision of short-term capital to investors in both private and public sector is performed by A, capital market, B, commodity market, C, factor market, D, labor market, E, money market. The solution is money market, E. Uh, because we know that the capital market provides long-term loan. You know, the Nigerian Stock Exchange uh, uh, provides long-term loan for uh, investors or business people, while the money market provides short-term loan for both private and public uh, sectors in the economy. Number 34, uh, the area in which commercial and mortgage banks share similarity is A, acceptance of deposit, B, granting of long-term loan, C, issuance of advice on housing matters, D, provision of houses, E, serving as agent of payment. Uh, I would say the answer is what? A, acceptance of deposit, because commercial banks accept deposit from customers, uh, mortgage bank also accept deposit. You know, uh, deductions are made from the salaries of 
uh, people who are, have applied and then that serves as a deposit you know, to the mortgage banks. So number 35, the Securities and Exchange Commission said was established in the year A, 1975, B, 1976, C, 1977, D, 1978, E, 1979. Uh, the Security and Exchange Commission was established in the year 1979. The theory of comparative advantage was propounded by A, Adam Smith, B, Alfred Marshall, C, David Ricardo, D, Irving Fisher, E, Lionel Robbins. Uh, uh, international trade and international economics have uh, you know, told us that David Ricardo is the one that introduced the uh, concept of the concept of comparative advantage. So David Ricardo, which is C, is the answer. Number 37, uh, the function of money that enables all prices of goods and services to be quoted in units is A, measure of value, B, medium of exchange, C, standard of deferred payment, D, store of value, E, unit of account. Uh, the correct answer in this case is E, units of account. The question is very clear. So number 38, the total amount of money in circulation in the economy at a particular time is A, deflation, B, money market, C, stagflation, D, supply of money, E, value of money. The solution is D, supply of money. Number 39, an increase in money supply without a corresponding increase in the volume of goods and services is steady dash inflation. A, cost push inflation, B, creeping inflation, C, demand pull inflation, D, open inflation, E, runaway inflation. Yeah, in this case, the answer is what? C, demand pull. Because when uh, money supply increases without a corresponding increase in productivity where goods and services are produced, it leads to too much money in circulation in the hands of uh, consumers, and then demand for goods and services we increase, whereas there is no corresponding increase in the production of goods and services. And that will uh, lead to what is known as demand pool uh, inflation. So one of the, number 40, one of the positive effects of inflation to Nigerian economy is A, depletion in the standard of living, B, increase in interest rate, C, loss of value for money, D, redistribution of income, E, reduction in the burden of debt. The answer is E, reduction in the burden of debt, you know, uh, occur uh, uh, when inflation, you know, is on the increase. Yeah, so number 41, which of the following is a problem of distributive trade in Nigeria? A, access to credit facilities. B, adequate information. C, adequate storage facilities. D, good road network. E, hoarding of goods. Which of the following is a problem of distribution trade, distributive trade in Nigeria? Uh, the solution is C. Yeah, uh, the, the issue of storage uh, facilities is a major problem when it comes to distributive uh, trade in Nigeria. So number 42, the venture issued on the security of a company's asset is the dash venture. A, convertible. B, irredeemable. C, mortgage. D, redeemable, E, secured. So the solution to this is redeemable. So when a debenture is issued on a security of a company's asset, it's known as redeemable uh, debenture. Number 43, the following are challenges associated with the manufacturing industries in Nigeria, except A, competition from foreign goods, B, insufficient capital, C, political stability, D, poor management, E, storage of raw materials. The following are challenges associated with manufacturing industry in Nigeria, except uh, uh, except the following are challenges associated with manufacturing industries in Nigeria, except uh, number 43, except political stability. 
C. That's the answer. Yeah, the following are challenges associated with manufacturing industry in Nigeria, except we all know that political instability is one of the major problems that we're facing in Nigeria, even though the political system is maturing gradually, but it's not yet at the level where we can see our political system is fully uh, matured. Yeah, so let's continue. Number 44. If the price of a commodity changes from 50 to 65 and the quantity supply increases from 40 to 70 respectively, calculate the elasticity of supply. Uh, you all know the, the formula for elasticity, right? Percentage change in quantity all over percentage change in price. You know, so uh, in this case, it's talking about uh, elasticity. It's pretty the same, uh, you know, concept with the elasticity of demand. So you, what you need to do here is just to calculate the percentage change in quantity. Uh, and that is, you find the difference between the, the old quantity, the base quantity and the new quantity, uh, which in this case is 30 all over the base quantity. So it should be 30 all over 40 times 100 all over uh, for the price, uh, 15 all over 50, because the difference between 50 and 65 is 15 and all over 50 times 100. When you do the calculation, what you are going to get is um, um, E, option E, that's 2.5. Yeah, so a market structure that determines the prices of commodity by the forces of demand and supply is A, duopoly, B, monopolistic competition, C, mono, monopsony, uh, D, oligopoly, and E, perfect market competition, perfect competition, sorry. Uh, the solution is E, perfect competition. So number 46. Number 46, uh, the most efficient operating level for a monopolist for a monopolist is attained at a point where A, uh, the price is less than marginal cost, B, the price is greater than marginal cost, and marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, C, the price is equal to marginal revenue, D, the marginal cost is less than marginal revenue, E, the marginal revenue plus marginal cost is equal to price. Uh, in this case, the solution is uh, B, when the price is greater than the marginal cost, and then when the marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, that's the point. That's the most efficient point, you know, uh, most efficient operating level for a monopolist. Yeah, yeah. So that's the option. So number forty-seven, the system of tax in which the payers pay the same percentage of their income is the dash tax. A, company B. Progressive C, proportional D, regressive E, sales. So uh, in this case, the solution is C. You know, when a tax system is configured in such a way that everybody, you know, pays the same uh, percentage of their income uh, as tax, is referred to as proportional. Mm. Yeah, it's referred to as proportional tax. So number 48, uh, one of the reasons government estimates its revenue and expenditure yearly is to A, foster economic growth and development, B, increase inflation, C, increase unemployment rate, D, prevent financial security, D, reduce government expenditure. The solution is clear. Uh, number 48 is A, foster economic growth and development. That's one of the reasons why government estimates its revenue and expenditure. So the price of a packet of Maggi was 500 in 2000, but rose to 700 in 2000 to calculate the price index. Uh, uh, the price index calculation we know is the, 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 the price in current period all over the price in the base period times 100. So uh, uh, for the calculation, um, it's going to be, uh, 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 700 all over 500, you know, multiply by 100. And when you do that, the option you're going to get is option D, 140 Naira. That's the calculation. Uh, maybe let me write the formula here. You know, consumer price index is equal to, we can say C at present time, all over C at base time times, 100. 
Yeah, so this is the formula, the rough work actually. So uh, going forward, number 50, which of the following is a demerit of direct tax? A, easy estimation of revenues. B, reduce inequality of income. C, they are inflationary. D, they are progressive in nature. E, they are prone to evasion. So which of the following is a demerit of direct tax? A demerit of direct tax is, you know, the option answer, the solution is uh, E, they are prone to evasion. Mostly when you want to tax people directly, you know, ask people to come and pay, yeah, people may want to use all sorts of, you know, tricks to evade the tax. But indirect tax, mostly people pay indirect tax without even knowing it. Companies that are producing goods will be taxed and then they will transfer the prices, they transfer the tax into the prices of goods they are selling. And at the end of the day, each and every consumer will go buy and then, uh, you know, indirectly paying yeah, taxes. So number 51, Asian Tigers economies comprise Singapore, Taiwan, Thailand, and A, China, B, Egypt, C, Indonesia, D, Nigeria, E, South uh, Korea. So uh, the solution is E, South Korea, even though, uh, you know, uh, in some cases, uh, the combination of Asian Tigers, uh, you know, mostly uh differentiated like in some instance you see people including hong kong you know uh some people include uh, uh uh malaysia and all the rest of those yeah so um number 52 securities and exchange commission perform the following rules except a enforce rules in dealing with securities b monitors the activities of nigeria's capital market C, regulate Nigerian capital market. D, scrutinize all applications of capital market. E, supervises banks to reduce potential risks of failure. Uh, number 52, the, the solution is E, the Security and Exchange Commission does not supervise banks. You know, they supervise the capital market. Supervision of banks is the function of the central bank, not the Security and Exchange Commission. Number 53, balance of payment deficit can be corrected through A, Increase in expenditure, B, increase in production, C, patronizing foreign goods, D, reduction in interest rate, E, reduction in tariffs. Uh, so uh, the solution to this is E. You know, when balance of payment is uh, on the deficit side, uh, uh, in most cases, the government try to correct it by reduce, by reduction in tariffs, because when tariffs are reduced, you know, uh, uh, you know, people tend to uh, come and import things from Nigeria or producers or rather, yeah, producers as well as farmers and other business people can, you know, uh, export goods uh, from Nigeria to other countries. And then that will help, you know, the balance of payment. So uh, number 54, which of the following is the future of developing economy? A, good health facilities. B, high rate, sorry, high per capita income. C, increase in export rate. D, low unemployment rate. E, population explosion. Uh, the follow the you know uh, the future of a developing economy mostly is population explosion. When you look at the BRICS nation, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, they are mostly they are referred to as uh, well, actually, they are, they are referred to as emerging economies, but when you look at developing countries like Nigeria, like Pakistan, like Bangladesh, you have high rate of population explosion. You know, uh, people are producing, people are giving birth, and then because of the relatively, you know, good uh, health facilities, you know, people, you know, stay longer than they used to in terms of uh, life expectancy. So one of the few basic features of the developing economy is population explosion. Uh, number 55, one of the future of an underdeveloped economy is A, high dependency on foreign nations, B, high savings and investment, C, low debt rate, D, low level of literacy, literacy, E, low level of importation. So the solution to this is what? A, high dependency on foreign nations. Underdeveloped economies are actually highly dependent on developed nations. Mostly underdeveloped economies export primary products, 
cash crops, you know, and so on and so forth, and then import finished products. So most of the technical goods that have been produced in developed countries are now consumed by uh, people in underdeveloped economies. So that leads to high dependency. Yeah. So um, number 56, one of the aims of African Development Bank, ADB, is to A, abolish all barriers for free movement of commodities, B, conserve foreign reserve of members, C, establish common policies in the area of agriculture and transportation, D, facilitate the convertibility of members' currencies, E, promote economic cooperation among members. Uh, the safest option here, even though most of the options are really close, uh, really, you know, related, uh, but the safest option is option E, you know, uh, to promote economic cooperation among member nations. So number 57, government policy of making public enterprise to become profit oriented is A, commercialization, B, deregulation, C, indigenization, D, naturalization, E, privatization. The solution is what? E, privatization. That is when government converts a public enterprise to become profit oriented. That will be privatization, selling government run agencies to private individuals, you know, so that uh, those individuals can run it in a profit oriented manner. For instance, uh, what was known as NEPA, a company what was known as NEPA was uh, privatized. That's why we now have a lot of, you know, uh, uh, companies like the just electricity distribution company, a co electricity distribution company, a do. Uh, electricity or is it Benin or something like that? Yeah. So uh, that is privatization. It was formerly owned by government public enterprises, but it's now running as private individual owned. And then the major aim is to make profit. So the National Poverty Eradication Program, NAPEP, was established in A, 1993, B, 1998, C, 1999, D, 2001, E, 2003. The solution to this is D. It was established in 2001. And it was established in 2001 to replace the national poverty uh, alleviation. You know, it, it started with national poverty alleviation and then it, got, it, it later got converted to the National Poverty Eradication Program, which is known as NAPEP. So uh, number 59, the policy in which government takes over the control of ownership of private enterprise due to strategic reason is A, commercialization, B, deregulation, C, indigenization, D, nationalization, E, commercialization. This is the opposite of uh, uh, the question we saw, to this, the, the second to the last question we just saw. So uh, the solution is what? D nationalization you know when when the government takes over a control of you know control and ownership of a private enterprise for strategic reasons is known as nationalization it has happened before in nigeria it has happened in several other countries yeah so the last but not the least the target of reform program of national economic empowerment development strategy needs include the following except a employment generation b privatization and liberalization, C, public sector reforms, D, service deliver, delivery by government agency, E, transparency and anti-corruption. Uh, the National Economic Empowerment and Development Strategy was introduced by the one-time president of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo. It was a holistic economic plan, uh, development plan, a medium development plan that is aimed as you know, uh, solving most of the economic problems that are being faced in the, within the Nigerian economy. And amongst it include employment generation. And then it also includes privatization and liberalization. You know, as you are aware, some of the companies then under that government was where uh, privatized or liberalized. Yeah, so public sector reforms, you know, a lot of reforms were done in some of the public sectors. Service delivery by government agency, I remember, it was during that time that uh, the issue of Savicom was introduced. 
So, but transparency and anti-corruption was entirely a different thing altogether. And the agency that was uh, established to take care of that was the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and also the Independent Corrupt Practices uh, and Other Related Offenses uh, Commission, that's the ICPC. So thank you very much for staying with me all through the video. Please, uh, you can share this video and recommend your friends to go through my channel and you know a lot of contents for secondary school students uh, will be dropped will be dropping there for further development. Thank you.